This is a cool boat. This is, uh, you know I have a soft spot in my heart for 1980s model hulls. Absolutely. And this is definitely a world cruiser, heavy displacement, 62 foot little harbor. Um, it's a special boat. Beautiful teak and mahogany interior, a lot of reasons to yeah. uh, invest and refit a boat like this. And the owner of this one is really going above and beyond. He's taking a 1981 sailboat and putting in power system and climate control system and everything that is bringing it up to 2022. Fantastic. You're down in the engine bay right now. It's yeah. huge. Well, you know, the first thing you might notice is that this boat has two engines, even though it's a monohull, um, <laughs> which is a little bit uh, out of the ordinary. But it actually has a lot of benefits for our situation right now, which is that we can uh, double the amount of alternators we have. And using those alternators as our main source of power, we can store any surplus energy that comes off these energy, off these engines, yep. in a big battery bank. Yeah, it's right here. Lithionix batteries. Huge battery bank, actually. This is a 48 volt bank, uh, which is going to be charged by two integral generators, which are going to be mounted right here to these Yanmar diesels. Those uh, will generate between eight and nine kilowatts of power uh, while the engines are running, and all of that gets us stored quickly in that big battery bank to run all these systems. Now, what's wild is that a boat like this. Traditionally, uh, boats like this always have to run their generator and third diesel engine to run all of their systems, especially the air conditioning. Uh, that generator used to be right here, right where the batteries are now. Uh, it's like a Tesla worth of power, like all the stack almost. where it used to be. <laughs> almost, it's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. But to make a boat that uh, runs without a generator, we have to look at the complete world of energy and how it moves around on the boat. One is production and generation of it, the storage of it, but then the consumption of it. And if we can use less power than we used in the past, we can go for longer periods of time on that stored energy, and therefore we can reduce the amount of time we need to run the engines, and reduce our fuel consumption, reduce our maintenance costs, and um, there's just so many benefits to not having that gen set aboard. Not to mention the noise, the fumes, the, it's... Uh, the, yeah, so how is this air conditioning different from four? I mean, before, what did it have, and why is this different? Yeah, well, this is the new system right behind me here. This is a VRV air conditioning system from Thermodynamica. Uh, this is their VRV20, it's called. And this is different in every way from what used to be here. In fact, what used to be here were uh, four self-contained units, um, which is pretty much what everybody is familiar with. Um, where you hook up seawater to it, power, some duct, and you've got air conditioning in various zones. Um, there's a number of drawbacks to the way it was done before, um, and not the least of which is the amount of power that it consumed. When we shift over to this system, which is a single compressor, single condensing unit with multiple air handlers, uh, we have an enormous power uh, reduction, and it's quieter, and it uh, delivers a lot more comfort and faster cooling and more rapid dehumidification. So this is just the, the compressor, this is just the, the, the heart of it, whereas before there's compressors in each cabin, right? That's exactly right. Yep, there's compressor. And the, the, some people might um, confuse this maybe with the chiller system you've seen on larger boats where uh, there is still a central compressor similar to this, but that um, cools like a water loop that goes throughout all the air handlers where this there's no water loop um, we actually connect the refrigerant to the various air handlers that blow the cold air and if you come over on this side you can yeah you want to show me a little more yeah make more sense of what i'm talking about here we just uh finished uh, making these connections here this is where the uh refrigerant travels to the various air handlers and um, you can see we have our uh, pressure gauge on here right now. We have, we've got it charged up with 450 pounds of nitrogen um, because we're doing our leak test. And uh, we let this sit for uh, over 48 hours to make sure that there are no refrigerant leaks in the system. And in our case, it's uh, perfectly solid. Hold me steady. Vapor tight. Yeah. Very nice. Can you maybe walk me through some of the parts that are going on on, on this unit here? Like different things that we can see maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the heart of any uh, air conditioning system is its compressor. 
if you have a compressor here, this is a Toshiba dual rotary compressor. It's the most efficient uh, compressor that's, that's manufactured today. And that's why Thermodynamica uses it in their systems. That compressor um, squashes that refrigerant gas. Not to get too technical, but when we squash that refrigerant gas, it gets really hot and it travels through some tubing that's back here into the condenser. And the condenser's on this side. Let me check that out. There's actually two of them on this unit. These big uh, silver cylinders. Um, these are actually made of titanium. And they're made of titanium because seawater flows through them. And well, seawater is really corrosive. So if we can use a really, really high quality material, um, we won't have those issues with corrosion. So after the refrigerant goes in there and it interfaces without touching, it interfaces on two different sides of metal in the condenser, the refrigerant gas and the seawater. And the seawater takes the heat away from that hot refrigerant gas and causes it to condense into a liquid. Once it's condensed into a liquid, it travels out those line sets that you saw that go to the air handlers. Okay. So, remember when we described the, the refrigerant getting condensed, turned to a liquid in the condenser? Well, that's pumped to this air handler through one of those hoses. It comes in, and the next thing it does is it goes through this EEV valve. It's called an electronic expansion valve. EEV. The, the red thing there. Okay. And that's a valve that regulates itself open and closed based on a number of different parameters. But when doing so, the refrigerant goes into that valve and is restricted. It's not able to flow freely into the other side, so it induces a pressure drop. And in doing so, the refrigerant's allowed to expand, and when it does that, it absorbs heat. And so the coil gets cold, and that's pretty much how air conditioning works. So it flows through, the refrigerant flows through these copper pipes that weave back and forth, and then you have these aluminum fins. You've probably seen something like this, maybe in a home system or in your yeah, car. Yeah. Um, very similar. The thing that's different is that that EEV valve works in concert with a number of different sensors, to control the amount of refrigerant flowing into this coil so it's always working at the optimum rate. And by making this coil super cold, we can rapidly condense water vapor out of the air, adding to the dehumidification effect. And why does rapid dehumidification matter? Well, if we can quickly dehumidify the boat, then the power required to maintain the boat at temperature drastically drops. So if you have a system that, that is struggling to cool the boat, it just is using maximum power all the time to try and maintain that. It takes, it takes more energy to condense water vapor out of the air. It takes more energy to dehumidify the air than it does to lower the temperature, if you think about it that way. So once we actually take the water vapor out of the air, uh, we can maintain the boat at temperature with a very small amount of power. And that's where this, this whole system excels because it, it knows how to do that. And so this coil is running a lot colder in comparison to what, like a chiller or something like that? Yeah, or? chillers, um, especially on boats, are notorious for um, leaving the boat feeling cold and clammy. And that's because you've got cold water flowing through the coil instead of refrigerant. And that cold water is only like 50, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's just when the coil is not as cold, it can't condense as much water vapor. It's like the drips on your the ice in your glass and how the outside of the glass drips, um, that's because that glass is cooling the, the water vapor that's in contact with it and turning it into liquid water. Well, the colder the glass is, the more it's going to drip. And that's what's going on here. Now, that might be an oversimplification because there's a lot that happens behind the scenes um, with a really sophisticated control system and uh, lots of sensors that are all over this unit. So these controls do a number of things, including controlling the speed of the compressor with this variable frequency drive and taking in all sorts of data points like pressures and temperatures from all over the system in order to run most optimally. It's really cool. It looks like a pretty sophisticated piece of equipment. It is. And it's really incredible how well they work and it, all these test points allow us to also put the data on the internet so we can troubleshoot remotely if there's ever a problem. Um, it's, it's really, really awesome. Here you can see our seawater coming in. Uh, there's a seacock under here comes to this big strainer. Just remember, when this is running, it's you know the boat's going to stay climate controlled all the time, so it's running 24 hours a day. So we're, we're moving a lot of water, so we like to have to put a really big strainer on there. The pump is mounted right on the unit. And then we're taking our discharge seawater uh, out the transom of the boat because this customer um, really wants a sleek look, and they're removing all of the through hulls on the side of the boat so that there's going to be no uh, visible seawater discharge on the side. So it looks like we have some hoses over here 
as compared to, you know, typically, I guess they're what, like copper or something like that? Yeah, if you're familiar with um, split systems, uh, which are very common in a lot of boats, where it's a similar concept where you have a you have a compressor and condenser that's separate from the air handlers. Usually you connect them with some some copper line sets, we call them. Well, copper is really difficult to work with, and especially in boats. Um, I'd so imagine in a refit, it can, it's like even harder to get that yeah, copper throughout the boat. Exactly. Right? So we use a special refrigerant hose. This uses these these uh, hydraulically pressed crimp fittings. Um, all of those will, will get insulated, but we, we leave them uninsulated for the time being while we're doing our leak test. Um, but that's how we distribute the refrigerant around the boat. And it's extraordinarily reliable. Um, we've worked at Pot RX, we've done a lot of commissioning of various types of air conditioning systems over the years. Um, a lot of split systems where we have to do flaring and you know, work with different things. I, I, I can tell you that we put this all together, there's a number of connections. Just yesterday we put our nitrogen in, uh, everything was torqued down properly, and the needle on our pressure gauge hasn't budged. There's, there are zero leaks in the system. It worked from day one, it hasn't been an issue. Other systems like this that we have out in the wild um, have not had an issue. We're, we're just The reliability of these uh, refrigerant hose terminations is second to none. That's awesome. Yeah. So when we look at this, this is like part of a system, right? So like, this is one of your highest consumers on the boat, is the air conditioning. Oh, by far, yeah. By far. Um, but it needs to sit on sort of like a, a electrical backbone if you really want to get rid of the the generator. Mm -hmm. um, so who do we work with on some of those, on some of the other components of this project? Yeah, well as you know about our X, we do all of those things in house as well. We, we know that for, um, the air conditioning system to run on batteries, the electrical system has to be designed properly. The batteries have to be large enough. The charging sources have to be able to support the amount of power we're taking out. We have to be able to put that power back in. Um, so it's pretty common um, for us at BoaterX to do all of the engineering design and installation of both the electrical side and the HVAC side. On this project, it was a real privilege to actually have a complete team of professionals from Ocean Planet Energy, uh, give a shout out to Bruce Schwab and Nigel Calder, who were the brains behind this really amazing power system. Um, and then Great Island Boatyard and their tech, uh, Bobby Hall, who's a veteran marine electrician, who's just done beautiful installation work of uh, the electrical side. And uh, Great Island Boatyard is just such a fabulous yard. I mean, the, the quality of the work they do is, is tremendous. We're very privileged to, to be invited to work here. Um, and uh, we, we really enjoyed being able to provide some specialty expertise uh, on this HVAC system. Yeah, this is fantastic, quite the project. They really packed everything in. You got the big inverters over there, the huge other, other batteries. <laughs> yeah, this is quite the project. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for showing me around. My pleasure. See you soon.